So, um, you know, think about being, you know, what I'm going to do in life. Uh, perhaps uh, going into uh, uh, the medical field, being a veterinarian, um, or being a doctor of some sort. But uh, caring for animals uh, oftentimes help us to realize that, uh, you know, we can help one another. Caring for the animals carry that on to helping one another. Um, and also, uh, being an urban farmer, I generate uh, jobs. Um, I need straw. I need uh, the wood shavings. Uh, I need the feed. I buy organic feed from a Davison farmer. Uh, I have to have equipment. Uh, I uh, uh, go to the tractor supply, um, places like that. So it's, it's a way to, uh, you know, provide jobs for us that we in an area <clears throat> excuse me that needs that income so it, it all around it's it's a good situation so thank you, thank you. our next speaker is mr. Robert Johnson mr. Johnson Ms. Van Buren, I'm getting really upset with you. Um, in the thing you said that there was nothing on public safety in your committee. And your constituents keep telling you that in your area it's getting bad. And you have nothing to say about any of it? I mean, really? I mean, Anyway, enough of that. The city of Flint, the people of Flint, voted for an ombudsman. My purpose here tonight. Now, the ombudsman was the first thing that the emergency manager tossed out because Dane Walling wanted to get rid of the ombudsman before, if you all recall right, as well as Mr. Freeman wanted to get rid of the ombudsman as well as the city attorney. Because of the fact that they, the ombudsman's office was able to do investigations against them, in which I had several investigations going, in which I had asked Mr. Um, Bade what happened to all that, and he said that they went in the trash. Um, and that was anybody's investigations. I'm gonna ask the city, as a volunteer to place me in the office of ombudsman. I'm going to ask the city to give me the power of the ombudsman. Why? I don't want pay. Because the people don't have nobody that they can come to. They can come to their council person, but that person don't have any power. Right? They can come to their mayor, but their mayor is all for Mr. Snyder and his lords and getting paid. Well, come November, hopefully everybody will get on Mr. Snyder's page and explain to the rest of Michigan why Mr. Snyder needs to go. But I am asking you now for the ombudsman's job, unpaid, period. The people of Flint need that position. They need that person to protect them. And right now, if we go to even Mr. City Attorney, you get nothing. Nothing at all. So however you got to do it, I want it done. Our next speaker is Mr. David Derby. Mr. Derby. Thank you, City Council. Uh, I'm David Derby from Perry Street in Mount Park. I'm speaking as uh, one who's seen uh, my younger siblings and uh, children from many other families uh, keeping backyard ch chickens as pets and egg layers. Uh, backyard chickens are one of the most appropriate pets for a small fenced yard. Chickens are small, quiet, friendly, and stay close to home. 
They're easy for children to care for and even better for a small yard, I think, than a dog or a cat. I hope one day to give my soon-to-be-born daughter a chicken. Uh, I fully approve of Roxanne Adair, one of Flint's best and hardest working citizens keeping chickens. I request the City Council to repeal the ordinance that forbids residential chickens and to instruct the administration to put on hold the enforcement of this ordinance while it is being reconsidered. Thank you. The next speaker is Mr. Chester Colburn. Mr. Colburn. Oh. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chester Colburn. And, you know, I'm listening to everyone speaking so far. Everybody's got a good point what they're talking about. But they're speaking to somebody who don't have a voice. You know, they're speaking to nine members up that don't have a voice, but then they want a pay increase. But your voice is not, your voice is not carrying no weight in the city right now. You got city finance managers telling you guys what to do, doing what he want to do. But then y'all got so much going on in this city right now. You know, y'all raising water rates, raising taxes rates. You guys got $12 million to eliminate houses in the city of Flint. But you didn't think about the residents around you, around the houses you eliminated. Didn't think about the peoples of the city. All you guys was thinking about, how can you guys get an increase? But your force is not getting paid for doing nothing. Y'all running around the city telling everybody what's going on. His finance manager came in and showed you guys what's going on. He came in the house and he stood up here and told you guys what he's going to do, what he's going to do, how he's going to do it. Your voice don't mean nothing to us. But all the people in here, they're discussing the business to you guys. And you, you can't take their opinion nowhere and do nothing with it. Your words don't mean nothing to the city right now. And what the people of the city flesh should do is boycott the city. Lock y'all out. Take over the city. And stand up and count it for it. This $12 million you took to tear down these houses. You could have took half of that $12 million and redeveloped these houses. Bring finances back in the city. Put low-income people in the houses. But no. Y'all want to move the low-income people out to Davis and Flushing, Holly, and all the different places. Pay the residents for the city to be bought back over again, rebuilt again. But that's not doing us no good. We want to know, basically, is you telling us to go home? Because you're not telling us nothing today. Financial management came and told you what he's going to do. Y'all have divorces now, say nothing, but y'all look on the paper and say, y'all get an increase of raising the pay trace. For what? To tell us y'all not going to do nothing? You know, and then you're crying about the water, water spills in this city. If the people know what's going on in the Flint River today, the water's coming in the house, they got the drink. You can purify with the oil waste and spill waste, but you can, can you purify the medication going into the water? It's causing the poison inside the city. Can you, can you tell us what, what you're going to do about that? Yeah, I'll take it from there. The next speaker is Mr. Eric Spillmaker. Mr. Spillmaker. Hello. Thank you for the time. Oh, oh well. Uh, all right. Well, I don't mean to beat a dead chicken, but here I am. My name is Eric Spielmaker. I was born and raised in Flint. I was in the Air Force for six years and um, actually just recently came back. So I go to school in Iowa for sustainable living. So I've got about a year left on that. and. Um, I learned a lot about chickens. Uh, that being said, there's a lot of people in this room who know more than me, I guarantee it, because you learn by doing. So, uh, But the point I, uh, the, the reason I mention those two things is because, one, um, I found that chickens can provide a, <clears throat> a strong, important ecological function uh, to any landscape, and especially in a city, in small lots. Uh, in fact, dog and cat manure can't even be used for fertilizer, I don't think, but I know chicken can, it's really good, actually. Um, there's many ways to manage that, and um, I direct Flintopia with my father on the east side, and we'd love to work with any group or anyone in the city who wants to come together with uh, some sort of training or class for people to keep their chickens and uh, have a certificate or something like that, so that's definitely workable. 
So we want to diversify the industry over here and create jobs uh, and also feed people clean food, not, uh, not CAFO eggs. Uh, it really, it's funny because now that we've been helping the neighborhood, I, I have, we give food out sometimes and I die a little, t a little bit each time inside whenever I have to give someone shitty food like, excuse me, uh, like CAFO eggs that come from a factory farm. Uh, it's not good food. It's not food. Uh, three reasons we need chickens to feed people, education, connect uh, our children to nature, and build community through sharing. Uh, people need clean food, nutritionally dense food. Everyone, uh, there's a lot of people who have chickens already, just so you know. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but tons of people have them. Uh, you know, a lot of those people that are from the city, I notice that, you know, the whole time they've, they've everything's been on the decline. And, but the industrial era is over. A guy, I'm 28 years old. I mean, I see 20 years from now, and once these buildings are torn down, we're going to have the space to do all kinds of amazing things. So the Green Innovation Zone, where we're stationed right now, is we intend to start to create a model there that, you know, anyone can copy or help us with or whatever. Um, so let me leave you with this. Uh, two things. One, there was a series of events that occurred at our headquarters building. Within three days, Two separate people um, were almost stabbed by two other people. Um, and it all started because someone stole something from our fridge. They stole eggs from our fridge. People are hungry. Now, let me, to reference back military permaculture. So these are my skill sets, my modest skill set here. And you know, just like the emergency manager said, I plan to organize and implement. So I'll put you this way. I'm going to part, start putting chicken coops everywhere. And, um, you know, it'll just be more trouble than it's worth for the city, really, to, to do that. Because, I mean, you, you guys are cutting more cops. So you can't, I mean, ha, you know, there won't even be cops to, uh, to really do that. So, um, so I just want to let the council know and everyone here that we're willing to work out anything, whatever it is. But I'm going to start putting chicken coops everywhere. So, and yeah. Now black hardware right down the street from us so they can they can sell all kinds of goodies so our next speaker is Mr. Chris Del Moroni. Mr. Del Moroni. Thank you. My name is Chris Delmarone. I live in Flint, Michigan. I wish to address council tonight on two issues. Uh, the first being um, the, the uh, there's a lot of trash and stuff in our neighborhoods. Uh, at 718 Frank Street and 826 Frank Street, uh, th there, there is a, a lot of garbage between the curb and the sidewalk. One might think it's an eviction. Uh, I'm not sure how or why it's there. Maybe simply the people moved out. Uh, but it needs to be picked up. And, and what we're being told is that Republic Waste, who has the contract with the city, does not pick up the eviction stuff. Now, someone needs to be responsible for that. If the landlord put it out, then the landlord should be responsible to have that picked up. Uh, there is no reason why Republic Waste cannot pick up bags in front of the homes where an eviction has occurred or where someone has moved out, even if there are couches in the refrigerator and all that other stuff there, at least they should be able to pick up the bags uh, and compost and other things. Uh, the other problem is uh, on empty lots when community people or groups uh, cut the weeds and that on the lots and they want, it, uh, they want to set it out for the compost, Republic Waste does not pick up in front of empty lots. And I, I think it's important that Republic Waste do, does that. They're, they're in, they're, they are in the community. They're, they're driving right by it. And I, I don't believe that Republic Waste knows who owns the property uh, where that uh, yard waste is, uh, is uh, located in front of it. Now, this property could be property owned by the city of Flint. It could be a property owned by the land bank, but more importantly, it could be property owned by a private residence who owns the property, who's paying taxes on it, and there's no reason why Republic Waste 
should not pick that up. I mean, people are paying taxes to have that picked up, and, and if they're maintaining the lot, Republic Way should pick this up. The other problem is, uh, the second issue is the pipeline, that blue economy. The pipeline that was to bring jobs to Flint, Michigan, and to Genesee County. And lo and behold, it did that. It brought the jobs. That company that's building the, the, the pipes for it, they're locating in, uh, you know, in the uh, Buick City Complex area, and that's a great thing. But for some reason, our city missed it. They missed what the idea was behind that, and they granted them a tax abatement. But that makes no sense at all. I mean, if it, we're, they're, they, they won the contract, they should supply the pipe. So basically what we're doing is we're giving away the gold for the price of silver here in this community. And it, for me, for the life of me, I just don't understand why we'd give a tax break to someone who's moving to the city anyways. It's like when we gave a tax break to the Capitol Theater. Well, I mean, were they going to move the Capitol Theater and try and get a tax break in some other community? I don't think so. So we need to, you know, be realistic. I'm done. Thank you. Our next speaker is Suzanne Broad. Ms. Broad? Well, it looks like Broad. Is it Suzanne Broach? Okay, Ms. Broach? Good evening. Good evening. I would like to know why my city council person do not have to live in the ward that he represents. Because you do not live there. It's no electrical meter on there. It's, the gas meter is falling off. You don't live in the house. Where do you actually live at? Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Matt Appleton. Mr. Appleton. The next speaker is Mr. Matt Appleton. Mr. Appleton. Mr. Appleton. If he's not here, the next speaker is Valerie Welch. Ms. Welch. My name is Valerie Welch. I live in the fifth ward, and I just have some questions. I too, you know, formal questions so they actually get answered. I want to know why the pre private sessions were held. I really didn't understand that. And, and me, yeah, I didn't hear you. President, can she repeat what she said? I can't hear her. Three minutes. 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 Okay, I was saying I would like to know why the private sessions were held as well, because I didn't understand that. And I also wanted to know, you know, can that guy early be asked to stay at these meetings so he can hear right. from the people who's controlling him? That's can right. he actually be asked that? And also, I know it's tough, but can the council people stay seated? You can sit up there. I can sit out here. I think it's kind of, you know, everybody needs to stay seated during these meetings and listen to everybody. And um, also, I would like to know what is the date and time of the next city council meeting, because it's very hard to get, you know, the time and date. I also.
keep hearing, you know, I want to know, like, who do I contact because the city is falling apart. And, like, I hear Snyder, I hear Early, I hear you guys have no power. Who has the power? Who do we talk to? Who do we write? What government don't know about this war zone that's happening in Flint? So, you know, I need to know who, who do I contact. Uh, uh, if, it's, you know, I, if you try to contact the councilman, my hands are tied. I can't do nothing. You, and you go to the mayor, can't do nothing. Snyder, it's Snyder's fault. Who, who do we talk to? Is it Obama? Where do we go? We need help. <laughs> Making sure I got on. Oh, I wanted to comment too. Is it illegal for churches to sell, I mean not sell, but give away free hot dogs? I'm at the store. They're praying for people, ministering, feeding the homeless, giving away free food that they're cooking free. Two city officials approach them and tell them they can't do it, shut it down. Then I go up the street by bursting where they shot the dog at. Like I said, 10 police cars. This guy out here barbecuing, this flames all in the air. The music on like 25, crump. I can't even, my car shaking. I got my music on, but I can hear the music from that guy. I'm like, okay, we keep, Churches can't pray and give away free food, but yet this stuff can go on. Like, what, what is y'all trying to turn the city into? So I would like those questions answered. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clark. Our last speaker is Mr. Joseph Whiteside. Mr. Whiteside. Good evening, Councilman. I represent 150 elders, 25 disabled children on the east side. I promise them today that I will find out who is our Councilman for our ward. Mr. Freeman, they want you to sit down. You're not doing an accurate job. They can't get in contact with you, so they get in contact with me to do your job. In four more years, I'll be seeing you. I'm sorry. Um, that concludes our speakers for this evening. I, I would like to make the announcement uh, before the end of the meeting at this time that our next city council meeting is Monday, July 28th, 2014 at 530. That is a tentative. These meetings are all tentatively set based on the um, emergency manager's orders. Um, <laughs> So at this time, I'm going to call on my colleagues on the council. I'm going to start with Councilperson Van Vieren this evening and work my way around. Um, I try to alternate um, at different council meetings. Councilperson Van Vieren, do you have any comments this evening? Uh, what I would like to do is acknowledge the turnout that we have tonight. I think it's great when we have representatives from different parts of the city to bring concerns to our attention not only for the council person that represents your area, but for all of council. We want to know what you're thinking, what you're concerned about, and to see if there's any way we can do something. I heard, at least it felt to me, loud and clear about the chickens, the, uh, to have them in the city, to have use of them, uh, to have it where it's, it's available. But again, you know, it's gonna need some type of structure so it's good that the input is there. I don't know who uh, placed this in front of us. Right. I thank you. Uh, it's nice to get the information because then we know that you're, you're really concerned about it. You're the experts and you're giving us that information. So please continue. Also, I would encourage you to come to any meeting that has this as part of their agenda. Um, I don't see Megan Hunter. Oh yeah, Megan's here. Uh, she's uh, the director for that department, 
and also overseeing the master plan. And this is part of the ideas out of the master plan. We truly believe that this is a good plan and it can work. And we want to make good use our, our, of our city, especially when we have land available. We don't want it just to be overgrown and uh, looking terrible. This could be a beautiful city, but we need to work together. So please don't give up on the issue about the chickens. I think it's a good idea. The representative from Flint and Utopia, um, I can't see if he's still here or not. They, they've been working very hard on the east side trying to make sure we have food uh, available for residents and to help residents to empower themselves of how to uh, keep themselves fed. And I know chickens in, in gardening is a big thing through that agency. So again, it's nice to have you here. Appreciate the young lady here. I would love to see more signs, maybe next time. Hey, don't give up on us. Come out and tell us what our job is about. We need to hear that. It isn't like we're ignoring you. Uh, you'd be surprised at the number of other concerns that come across our um, plate, you know, uh, right now, you know, I'm working on a lot with water concerns and bills and um, I hope there's some way we can make that to our advantage, at least to educate people on how they can uh, keep track of the water they're using, how to make better usage. Maybe there's some smart things we can do to help the family so as you're using them, uh, you're keeping track. Are you being charged properly? Are you using the water as best you can uh, since you have to pay for every drop that comes through that system? But uh, I guess I can't overemphasize. Please keep coming. When you come, that tells us that citizens care and they want to make change. If you stop coming, we're, I think we'll be in a very sad state. So please help us and support us. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson Van Buren. Councilperson Galloway. Thank you. Um, I first wanted to say um, thank you to those that are here to support um, chickens. I did speak um, personally with Roxanne um, and requested the packet that my colleagues now have so that a dialogue can begin. Um, one of the things that I want to clear up, and I hope the gentleman from the Flint Journal is here today, um, the statement that was printed in the newspaper was not accurate. Um, when he called me, I shared with him that I did not have enough information to make a statement or a comment in which he appeared very irritated, um, so much so that um, I did share with him, I think that I met her, and, um, and I did say, and I will say now, and I share with Roxanne when I was um, campaigning, it did appear to be a little busy. There was a lot of activity going on. The chickens did not appear at that time, not that just like our other pets, they weren't having their um, time out. And if I don't, if I recall, I think that you have a dog that is very protecting over them. And, and you said to him, you're not keeping the chickens like you're supposed to. And, and he went right over and began to shepherd the chickens to let them know that they were to go to a certain place. So it was clear that there was structure in that environment. Um, but I do want the Flint Journal not to misquote me. And if the Flint Journal can't respect what I say, I want them to not print anything about what I say. If you, I see, I, you see me in the back, if that's okay. Because I think it's, it, it was fair to me, for me to make that comment. And he was so irritated that he said, goodbye, Councilwoman Galloway, and, and hung up. Um, but I didn't have enough information. I shared with him I hadn't spoken to Roxanne. I told Roxanne that I wanted to partner with her. Well, but at, at the time, and neither here nor there, Roxanne, we spoke. I did follow up with you. Um, and, and so I share with Roxanne that I will partner with her. But you guys have to give me time, too. She's been working on this for eight years. So I want you to be fair and allow me to do the investigation that I need to and work with my colleagues as well. I think that's fair. And although there is a lot of representatives here, this is not a, a, a fair assessment of what everyone in the community thinks. And I share with Roxanne that we would want to call at least a ward meeting and find out some information. I'll get with the legislative um, committee, get with um, Peter Bade, get with Megan Hunter and see what um, we can do. 
So um, I am going to partner with that and make that a priority. Um, the other thing that I will share with the, the – because um, the pe people stated that they were concerned about the emergency manager, and it does appear to be disrespectful. But one of the things that the people need to know is that the emergency manager is not elected by you. He is appointed. And when people are appointed, they don't feel as though they have a responsibility to you because you didn't choose for them to come. So they don't feel like you voted for them and therefore they are here to do a job and, and sometimes in their mind that does not require them to have your input. There are decisions that have to be made and they feel as though they know what's best for the city. And so if you want to be heard, you have to be heard. If that means a letter to Mr. Early, trying to make an appointment with Mr. Early, um, coming here before the council and making statements like you're doing has not been very effective as you can see. So we need to partner together or those of you who feel as though something needs to change, we need to partner together. And, and, and please work with the city council. I hear a lot of people.